Could a ghost hug another ghost? If Leonardo da Vinci was such a great inventor, why didn't he invent something to keep him alive? All of these questions you can find the answer to on This Paranormal Life. Hello everyone, hey. welcome back to This Paranormal Life, the best comedy paranormal podcast based out of this bedroom. My name is Roy Powers, this guy's name is Kate Greer, and if you're new to the show every week, what we do is we investigate a brand new paranormal tale, case claim, story, whatever it is, and come to a conclusion at the end of the show to decide whether it is true or it is false. Uh, our sponsor for this week is um, a little uh, company called, they, their site is www.mindyourown business it's classified so uh we can't tell you who they are don't ask any more questions they are a vpn server that's right we're bringing you internet privacy to the masses people that would be a great sponsor <laughs> if it was <laughs> it would be right up rally right up if we got sponsored by a vpn company a place that made custom katanas yeah and um men in uh, some a factory in china that made men in black cosplay company robes willing somewhere to, that makes robes robes would be fantastic well anyway this is this paranormal life i have a fantastic story for you this week kit oh it's actually another listener submission get out of here that's right this, this guy's is just in, knocking it out of the park every week so many good submissions these days this one is from emily morin fournier which I hopefully pronounced right. She emailed into this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com and she said, Hello, I'm a big fan of the podcast and enjoy the weekly investigations and jokes. One well documented mystery I think you might like to investigate is the Falcon Lake incident. This is an alleged UFO encounter that happened in Falcon Lake, Canada, and there are pictures of the encounter. That's great. I'm not quite sure what I believe, but I think you'd find the case really interesting. Best, Emily. Thanks, Emily. Great email. I emailed back. She didn't respond. I assume she's been taken. Right. This was yeah. her last correspondence. We're narcs. We hand over <laughs> people's personal Bro, information no, 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 as no, soon no, as no, they... No, don't. Hey, hey, hey. No, no. Oh, Remember to send the, in your... I forgot who's listening to this. Yeah. Shh, shh. Remember to send in your... <laughs> the, the longest con of all time to do 120 episodes of a f***ing paranormal podcast to convince Strange, people Stranger to CIA in. projects have existed, people. I mean, that is true. I think at one point the CIA was funding a woman to give drugs to a dolphin. Oh, yeah. And she ended up having sex with it. I think, yeah, I think you're funding her to jack off the dolphins <laughs> more than that. So you're right. This probably wouldn't be the strangest uh, CIA operation. But this isn't a CIA operation, guys. We're on the good side. The side of truth and light and justice and freedom and power and money. And I'm here today to drop a big old T-bomb right on the plate. You're back in the military somehow. <laughs> Listen, Start, it started with truth and light and it ended with you officer, dropping a bomb. Myself and Officer Kit have never been involved in a CIA operation. I mean, Lieutenant, I mean, Kit. <laughs> Kit, please tell these people we're not narcs. Affirmative. <laughs> we are one of you, the public. I love a beer and love island. Let's go local sports team. All right, we dilly dallied enough. Let's 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 get into this bad boy. It's 1976, and one of Canada's finest police officers is out on patrol in the wilderness of Winnipeg. What makes him the finest? He's he's on the force. He's the hottest. Yeah, he's gorgeous. He's a ten. He's an absolute ten. Seven foot one, muscle bound. When all of a sudden a man bursts out of the trees, he's out of breath injured and his clothes are badly burned the finest officer pulls his handgun you've got 10 seconds bud or else i'm blasting your ass back into that bush the police officer goes to help the stranger but the man cries for him to stay away because he's radioactive surely not who is this strange man what happened to him let's hashtag investigate it's May 20th, 1967, and an industrial mechanic named Stefan Mikalak was wandering by himself in the wilderness of Winnipeg. Now, Stefan was a bit of an amateur geologist who enjoyed prospecting in his spare time, mining for silver and quartz. A regular old treasure hunter. So what do you say his day job was again? Uh, he was a, he's an industrial mechanic. I feel like, that, feel like that's a tiring enough job as it is. 
uh, that's true to not get into mining for minerals but also if you're gonna take your equipment from work from your work as an industrial mechanic and use that in your spare time yeah mining for diamonds is a pretty good a pretty good reason a pretty good thing to do with that equipment you're probably not gonna go to a ballet class no you're right but Stefan didn't realize that the treasure he would come across that day would scar him for life. <laughs> this is not a treasure then. And the only thing he should have mined was his own damn business. Stefan was walking alone through the woods by Falcon Lake when he heard a strange rustling in some of the nearby bushes. He cried out, Hello? But there was no response. Then, the 51-year-old claims he heard a quiet honking sound. Then more, then more. Then suddenly a large gaggle of geese burst out from the bushes, honking like mad. <laughs> There's not many things that honk, so that makes sense. He should have known, I think, by first honk. Yeah. <laughs> that it was gonna be a goose. But does that that doesn't mean that's not something to be afraid of, because I don't know if you have had many experiences with geese, but those motherfuckers are fearless. I, uh, yeah, I mean, they're pretty aggressive. But this guy's an industrial mechanic who also uh, hunts for diamonds in his spare time. <laughs> He's probably got a wrench he could bash the geese with. That's true. That's true. But you also, you can't mine a goose. <sighs> no. And this is a whole gaggle yeah. of them. I, th I honestly think, because, you know, everyone bigs up like, oh, I want the heart of a lion. You should ask for the heart of a goose. Yeah. Fearless creatures. A goose lives like it's never going to die. Yeah. <laughs> That's 100%. Every day it goes and gets that bread. A goose is what you... A lion? Lions are almost extinct. Those sons of bitch... Did you see what happened to Mufasa? You don't want the heart of that son of a bitch. He got trampled by wildebeests. Lions are, you know, we've seen the Lion King. Lions are out there, you know, spending time with their families, yeah. hanging out in clouds, philosophizing. Geese, on the other hand... They're like Bane. They're born in the darkness, <laughs> born in the swamps, uh, and they just uh, honk their way to the top, to the killing top. anything that gets in their way. Honestly, a genie pops out of a lamp and says, three wishes, what do you want? I'm going straight off the bat. Heart of a goose. Feet of a goose. <laughs> I want the resourcefulness of a rat because those sons of bitches don't die either. They're pretty much apocalypse proof. And maybe like the strength of a beetle, because that's the that's the trifecta right there. The genie doesn't know what to do. He just turns you into a beetle. <laughs> so you could just ask to be resourceful. But Stefan, as you said, he's a brave guy with a lot of tools. He laughs off the encounter and he went on to continue his prospecting. But what had startled these geese to begin with? Stefan heard a low buzzing noise and looked upward towards the sky to try and see what it was. Through the trees, he could make out the faint red glow of two strange cigar-shaped objects. Hmm. One of the crafts slowly descended towards the rocks below, while the other craft floated ominously for a short period before taking off. Now, Stefan was an intelligent guy, but he was still only an industrial mechanic. You know, he wasn't qualified by any standard to have a guess at what this thing was, beyond his pay grade. But from what he saw, he assumed it must have been some sort of experimental US military craft. It's a good guess. It's a quite a logical place to go to in his defense. So for the meantime, he kept his distance. Now with the craft in sight, Stefan sat for a half hour and sketched out its appearance. Wow. Yeah, so well, he had a lot of time. I'm starting to like this guy. He's pretty resourceful. And he's making some rational decisions. He's, he's like, okay, this must be some... He's thinking logically. It must be some sort of experimental military craft. I'm just going to keep my distance, draw a little picture. So if anyone asks, I'm like, bam, this is what it looked Big like. Big mistake, punk. <laughs> they pull a revolver on him. A space you're, gun. Yeah. You're taking unauthorized sketches of military technology. Along with the sketches... He also made notes mentioning the whirring sound of motors, hot air, and the alarming smell of sulfur. Continuous honking. Oh, no, that's, that the, was the, that's geese the geese again. again. Yeah, sure, the sure. pitter-patter of little gray feet on the... That was oh, goose feet. Yeah. That was a goose. They are gray, but still goose feet. Goose feet. The alien's eggs, massive and white. You know what? The thing wasn't cigar-shaped. It was goose-shaped. <laughs> of course it was goose-shaped. I'm like, this is his sketch of the craft. Just a picture of a goose. <laughs> what had startled these geese? It was a bigger goose. A bigger goose. It was a 
swan actually came out of nowhere. I actually have a picture of the um, the craft that he drew here, the sketching I with put, his. Uh, I would love to marks. see this. This is a great case because I have so much evidence to show you, and I feel like we haven't had that in a while. So thank you so much for emailing this case in. Take a look, little look here at the uh, the sketch that he drew that night. Ooh. Wow, it's a good thing you shouted out Da Vinci at the top of this episode because this is a very, this is a very distinguished uh, sketch. He's gone into great detail. He's done some tasteful shading yeah, with yeah. his uh, charcoal pencils here, and then he's do- done in cursive that kind of uh, very, very fancy cur- sort of shorthand cursive that's impossible for anyone but the writer to read. I don't know if I would describe this as cigar shaped. Yeah, I mean. Gun to my head, I would say he drew a UFO. It's a straight up UFO. It's a flying saucer for sure. Yeah, it's a very, very typical flying saucer. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know what kind of cigars Stefan is smoking. I think he's <laughs> smoking blunts. I think he's trying to be frank here. I mean, I guess the idea, if you imagine a classic UFO, it's like bulging in the middle and thinner at the edges. Yeah. Uh, I guess cigars are a little bit like that. Do you know what these notes say or mean? Um, some like measurements about the craft, like mm-hmm. guessing the distances. Some are just mentioning the tiny little finer details, but I think a lot of it is mentioning the sound of the motors, the hot air, the smell of sulfur, little details like that that are actually just emanating from the craft rather than about the craft itself. Got it. That makes sense. Now, despite some outlandish claims so far, this is where our story gets crazy. Stefan noted, which you can see in the illustration, that there was a door open on one of the sides, and inside he could make out the glow of bright lights inside the craft. Now before he could approach, he heard two voices by the craft. Stefan, being a mechanic and quite an educated man, cried out, I don't know what his accent is, so I'm just gonna have a swing of something. Do you Yankee boys need some mechanical help? <laughs> Don't call them Yankee boys. What? I think that's a, a, a he's a dig at a military profession. Go on, I'm like a Yankee boy. Really? Because we're in Canada. If someone's got an experimental death craft, <laughs> call him a Yankee boy. You need little Yankee Yankee doodle bastards need some help with your with your toy plane. I got a light for your cigar, eh? <laughs> it's like. You in, you're out for a hike and a Lockheed and Martin stealth craft ripples through at a thousand miles per hour, comes to a screeching halt and lands. It's a <laughs> X-Men plane. Uh, armed military guards come down. You're like, any of you f***ing rednecks <laughs> need a hand from a real man? <laughs> but the voices just stopped talking. Uh-huh. So Stefan decided to ask them again in his native language, Polish. I said, <laughs> do you Yankee bastards need some help lighting your cigar? <laughs> Still no response. He tried again in Russian and German. Wow, he really is educated. Yeah, he is, but still nothing. So he decided to check. <laughs> he, by the way, he's just showing off. <laughs> What's the chances that it's one of these languages? He tried again in Russian, German, sign language, Morse code, smoke signals, <laughs> sent a homing pigeon, <laughs> text, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Tinder, Hong. Well, he decided to check this thing out for himself. So he slowly walked over to investigate. The craft's metal was smooth, with no seams or bolts at all. The light from inside the ship was bright enough that he had to put on his welding goggles that he used to protect his eyes when prospecting. When he moved away from the open door, Stefan said that three panels slid across and sealed it shut. He couldn't help himself and he wanted to touch the side of the craft, but when he did, the fingertips of his gloves melted on his hands. What? Yeah, this thing is burning up. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, too hot to handle. He jumped backwards as the humming of the ship grew louder and it began to spin counterclockwise. He said the last thing he noticed was a grid-like panel with holes in it pointing in his direction. And then, BAM! He was struck in the chest by a blast of fiery hot air that threw him backwards and set his clothes on fire. Holy shit. I'm assuming this is the craft getting the F out of T. Okay, so he was basically like standing with his face to the rocket launcher 
of a NASA craft. Exactly. Just yeah. poking around, touching it. Yeah. Right really as they're at T minus two seconds to a, lift a off. A full on countdown. I mean, he saw the door shut and the craft rotate, and this thing just blasted him in the face. Whoa. I could barely even handle it when I open up the oven too quick and I get blasted by my <laughs> pizza air. Blasted <laughs> as with a, potato smiley face air. <laughs> I like, I just can't wait, man. Those chicken nuggets have been in there three minutes and I'm thinking it's worth the food poisoning at this point if I just get the nuggets, open up that oven door, and whoa, I'm blasted five feet backwards into the dishwasher just so I could get a taste of those sweet, sweet nuggets. Are we still talking about the craft? No, we're very much talking about last Tuesday. Oh. Uh, which where I was, you probably noticed the, um, the scorch marks of my body against the wall. I thought it would cook the nuggets faster if I jacked up the heat. It was 20 minutes on 200, so I thought it would be 2 minutes on 2,000. That math was wrong. Um, the, the nuggets were hot to touch, and they burnt the fingertips of my glove to How my finger. your oven goes up to 2,000? I have no idea. Actually, if you're interested, I have a uh, sketch of the nuggets that I did uh, 30 minutes before placing them in the in the oven. I'm sorry, let me get that straight. You had you sketched the nuggets for a good 30 minutes be- prior to cooking the frozen nuggets. Yeah, I thought you were so desperate to eat the nugs that you cranked the oven to 2,000. Well, I thought it was gonna cook them in two minutes. Remember, so I thought I had 30 minutes to sketch the nuggets. You had a decent amount of time to cook and eat the nuggets. Yeah, I had a decent amount of time. I could have cooked and eaten the nuggets in a normal amount of time, but then I wouldn't have these sketches, would I? It's a cigar. Cigar. Stefan was obviously in shock, dizzy, hurt, and in disbelief, he stumbled through the forest. And this is where the story began, when he bumped into the mounted police officer out on patrol. Now, sometime later in the story, Stefan was eventually treated and hospitalized for burns to his chest. But the strangest part was that the burn resembled a bizarre grid-like pattern. What? Yeah. So. I mean, usually someone claims they've been blasted by a grid-like shape on an alien craft and they are burnt, you know, if it's not just a big patch in there. If it is a big patch on their shirt, you might have some questions. But I need to show you the burn marks on this man. I forgot you said we got a ton of evidence. We have photos of the, uh, the burn marks on his clothes that caught fire and the burn marks on his actual chest in the hospital. As I explained in previous episodes, I am more than happy to uh, go out on a limb on a conclusion with uh, simply hearsay, rumors, and such. The golden alone. pyramid. The golden pyramid of truth. But if we do have evidence, I'm happy to see that too. We'll take a look at this. We have two images here. One is Stefan's undergarment, his vest, which he was wearing underneath a uh, striped shirt. This seems to have taken the brunt of the blow. This thing is blown to smithereens, really. A charred around the outside as if someone has just held a naked flame to it. It's blackened. Uh, But then right in the middle, there's kind of like as if someone toasted his vest in a waffle iron kind of pattern. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it, actually. It's a bit square, but with the kind of uh, grid-like holes in the middle. And then a bit more disturbingly underneath that, we have Stefan in presumably his hospital bed uh, with his bare chest lying there and the same grid-like pattern is very clearly visible on his stomach. I don't know what to make of that. That is nuts. Never seen anything like that. It's nice having evidence, isn't it? I mean, like... It's like a whole other show. (laughs) This is crazy. We can just end the show now. It is genuinely quite hard to imagine... You know, we're not doctors, but it's hard to imagine what kind of device, what kind of impact, what kind of blast would cause that. You would imagine anything hot enough to cause that degree of burn to literally singe his clothes Yeah, would leave a more generalized burn uh, in and around this, the focus of the burn on his body. Yeah. Whereas what we have is just an incredibly precise, as if he just, like I say, fell asleep on a waffle iron 100 percent, yeah it just perfectly burned into his chest i mean the, the yeah the pattern is so strange because as we said i mean the shirt is pretty much obliterated but then when you look at his actual body the burn marks are almost like pinpoints it's like laser yeah 
yeah, what we, I, I don't know of any type of device or military craft uh, that, I don't know, would have a propulsion system where the, um, the trail would be so finely defined. It's very strange. But hell, there's a lot of military crafts that I don't know about and we don't know about. So, uh, who knows, folks? Well, despite the bizarre nature of his injuries, Stefan eventually made a full recovery, which is great, and lived until 1999, wow. until the age of 83. To the very day he died, Stefan continued to claim that his story was true. Now, when his son was asked about his father's story, he said, if you asked him what it was he saw, he could describe it in intimate detail, but he would never say it was definitely extraterrestrials hmm. because there was no evidence to prove that. He might ask, well, what do you think I saw? But right up until he died, his story never changed one iota, nothing about it or how he told it. <laughs> I thought you were about to tell me on on his deathbed, <laughs> however, he said they were f grays. The world has to know. What a way to go out. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Your wife leans in you know she th he's like come come closer please i'm i'm weak yes honey what is it come closer i have something important to tell you of course my, i know you're gonna my, miss my, i know you're gonna miss your son my final word no it's not about it's not about the boy it's, oh it's about me no, oh my darling uh, yeah, yeah oh i love you too you're, you're great okay i love you too but no it's not about actually it's not about that it's it's even your father more perhaps important. i know your relationship no. with him was rocky yeah, from the start yeah, he was a bit of a bitch but Time right. to time. Uh, Don't swear on your deathbed. Your son is right beside you. He's very um, young. Oh, Jesus. Where do you get come from? <laughs> well, I, I'm very weak. Would you f let me get it out already? You swore again, baby. Jesus. Very impressionable. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna die soon. Mama, what's Papa f talking about? Not see what you've done Shut now. Shut the f up. Stefan. <laughs> They're grace. They're grace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kid, this seems like a good time for us to take a step backwards. Please. Let's look at this <laughs> case. step back from the extraterrestrial <laughs> craft that's about to blast our faces off. What are, what, are, what are we thinking so far? It's a pretty remarkable story, but for once, we actually have some evidence, which is refreshing. Hold that, on. You know, makes some of the statements that uh, Stefan is making and some of these claims, I don't know, quite strong. Definitely. Uh, I mean, the burns alone, we don't that often come across bodily harm uh, that is documented at a kind of medical level. He was admitted to hospital for these injuries. And it kind of leaves you with two scenarios when something like that happens, where we have to consider, is this a real paranormal phenomenon? This is what happened to him exactly as described. And he was blasted by a UFO causing these burns. Or is the eyewitness testimony here, is the person crazy enough that they have either willingly or accidentally hurt themselves in this way yeah, to make their story more believable. Uh, and what I would say about that is it seems like a Stefan has a good character reference. He held on like a great career. His family believed him. He never really purported to have a crazy paranormal experience. He just told people plainly and clearly what happened to him. Yeah, He didn't evangelize this or try to make money out of it. Yeah, I mean, and as far as a person goes... An industrial mechanic, I'm sure that takes a pretty high level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. We already know he can speak like f five languages, which yep. either means he's smart or a spy. And I think actually previous to being an industrial mechanic, he was a uh, in the military. Oh, wow. That's yeah. another twist. Yeah, which doesn't come into it too much. But I mean, it shows you that he's not like some crackpot in the woods drinking moonshine and uh, claiming that he punched Bigfoot. But you, know. you said this was this is, this is Canada, isn't it? This is Canada. So he was in the Canadian military, which is a whole other kettle of fish. The American military. To be fair, I think he actually immigrated to Canada from Poland. So I don't know whether his military service was in the Polish military or the Canadian military. Listen, he was <laughs> he was in station in Winnipeg. He had hair down to his butt cheeks. He was drinking maple syrup and playing cards for ten years. That's what he was. That's what he was doing. I have literally no point. I have no idea what point you're trying to make. I'm just saying. Are you trying to say he was Canadian the or Canadian, he was a bad the Canadian police Canadian military is a goddamn gentleman's club. Okay. Okay. Thank you. For I had no clue what was going on for a second. Okay, so it's a gentleman's club. It's an absolute gentleman's club, right? And you're you're 
you're now assuming it was the Canadian military, not the Polish military. Right. Which I assume right. you also right. think is a, ge- is a Polish gentleman's club. The Polish military? Here we go. They're sitting around sipping vodka, hairs, <laughs> hair down to their kneecaps, tr- playing games of Dupa Bishkupa. So, so just a Polish version of, of course, right? Weird, you know, a Polish card game as well out of out of the the out of the box. A what? I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, I thought this might have more bearing um, because, as far as I'm concerned, anyone that works for the U.S. military is in on their uh, Black Ops Area 51 style military technologies, but. Um, Knowing that he was in the military for a totally different country, I, this probably has less conflict with him seeing a potentially classified military aircraft. Yeah, it also maybe justifies um, his decision to approach the craft and ask the Yankee boys if they need help. I guess maybe if you have served in the military yeah. and you're a mechanic, you could have relayed that information to them had they responded to you. Mm. You could have been like, hey, I was in the military. I've, I've worked with things like this before. If you're having some problems, let me know. I can maybe give you some help. Well, hey, I was the same with you. I, I read a number of different paranormal articles on this thing. By the time I finished reading, I was ready to slap a big fat yes on it. But the more research I did, the more I came across inconsistencies <gasps> and some little details that made me a bit more skeptical. Really? And obviously, I if I could choose, I wouldn't discuss these at all on the podcast. But I also believe in seeing both sides of the coin. So I think it's only fair that we read out some of the more uh, skeptical opinions um, from people who have investigated this case. So obviously the case drew a lot of attention from the local police who wanted to investigate the site. Unfortunately, when asked, Stefan initially couldn't find it, which is a bit of a red flag because presumably you are stating that this is a site where an alien craft landed and blasted a fiery hole in the ground yeah, uh, and took off. And I mean, he seems like he was pretty together that night. Uh, so to be able to not find the site w- is, yeah, it would make me a little skeptical as well. You can imagine them going to him. It's like, so where was it? He's like, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's a big jungle out there. I don't know where it was. They're like, literally, give us like a 10 mile radius and we'll send out a team and we'll track it down. Uh, <laughs> it's like, literally, give us any hint of anywhere near where it might have been. Uh, there were some geese. There were some geese in a bush and they honked. It's like, we have this equipment that can actually detect uh, radioactive sites. Uh, so if you could just point <coughs> us in literally north or south, it's a coin toss. It really, it truly is. I was blasted so hard. (laughs) Then there was the officer that Stefan bumped into on the night of the incident. Right. Now, in his report, he stated that Stefan showed him his burned hat as well. But when the officer asked why his head was not burned, he refused to answer. (laughs) What do you mean? He he didn't even make (laughs) up an excuse? Bear in mind, this is a man who's just been blasted in the chest by an alien beam. So let's... His brain might have been scrambled. Mashed potatoes at this point. (laughs) When the officer tried to get a look at the burns on his shirt, this is when he claimed he was radioactive and kept moving away from the officer. Again, it's it's not a good look because, you know, if there was a police officer on site willing to investigate you and you assume you're radioactive. I've never assumed in my life that I'm radioactive. No. And I've 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 done even some after weird stuff. Oven gate after the oven chicken nugget episode. Not even then. In the words of the police report, it looked like he had, quote, taken a black substance, possibly wood ashes, and rubbed them on his chest. What? But that's just, that's a police officer's statement of what it looked like. Okay, that was his visual assessment. Yes. If that was a doctor's (laughs) assessment, this case would have been over long ago. Well, because he did go to the hospital and he was treated for burns to his chest. So he didn't just rub dirt on his stomach. Jesus Christ. When he was asked questions like, if touching the spaceship was hot enough to melt your glove... Why isn't your hand burned? He refused to answer. Okay. The police officer also uh, offered to actually give him a ride back to where he was staying. Very kind. Stefan refused. Right. Then called up a local newspaper (laughs) and said, uh, no press, just a ride. I couldn't find online whether they hung up immediately or gave him a ride home. He did get home eventually. What? What? (laughs) What did he mean? I what? Know. I don't know. They're just like, 
Uh, what do you what do you think a newspaper does, sir? <laughs> also, I like to think that's all he said. He like calls the number. Beep boop boop beep boop boop boop. Hello, this is the uh, Winnipeg Weekly Hotline. How how can I help you? Do you have any good scoops? No press, just ride. Nope, I don't. Nope, I don't have time for this. <laughs> boop, just immediately hanging up on him. <laughs> the officer's walking away. Wait, can I still get a ride, sir? <laughs> Is it too late? You can look at my hat. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Why isn't your head bird? F*** off. I mean, can I still have the ride? <laughs> now, this is also one of the most damning parts uh, of the conflicting statements. Stefan claimed that he had not been drinking on the day of the encounter. <laughs> Here we go. Or any day that week. Okay. But a quick check with the local bartender... <laughs> confirmed that the night before the encounter stefan had come in and at least had five bottles of beer but that was the night before the encounter okay the police officer who uh, bumped into him on that uh on that day did mention in his report that he looked and acted like he was intoxicated okay but you look pretty freaking gone if you've been blasted in the chest by an alien death beam all right yeah you yeah look, you look pretty you look pretty drunk. toasted your eyeballs be pretty red and you'd probably have the munchies if you got abducted by an alien too. Oh, you want me to say the alphabet backwards? My legs are jelly and I've been burnt by a freaking space waffle iron. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do any of that, sir. He's like, okay, we'll just do the breathalyzer. Absolutely not. My breath is ash. Probably alien radioactive piss. I will not breathe into that. bottles just falling out of his pocket. <laughs> They planted it on me, those little greys. You know, they actually use bourbon as space fuel. Police officer goes into his squad car. I'm I'm going to need backup. I, I don't know what this guy's doing. He was either abducted by aliens or he's really drunk and I need to arrest him. He turns around and he's just spinning in circles going, do, 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 do. Cancel the first order. Just bring the SWAT team and the attack dogs. <laughs> Dog is ass. Okay, so there's a couple different things in this case that I don't have the time or care to mention. Mm. Um, but we can blast through a couple of them because there there are some important facts in here that are worth mentioning, even though I don't think that they necessarily uh, impact the case at all. He was eventually able to find the site where he oh. brought people uh, to and also investigated himself. They measured the soil, which was um, slightly radioactive. Okay, okay. But then scientists examined the soil in the entire region, uh, and it was all a little bit radioactive <laughs> um, because of some material that was like quite deep under the ground. Sure. He also claims to have investigated the site with a... Uh, ufo enthusiast and recovered a piece of scrap metal that had been fused to the rocks by the landing site which i can give you a little glimpse of here i'd like to see that there it is against a um a coin uh so you can get a get an uh, idea um, of the house how big it is so that's the okay that's a piece of okay that's a piece of scrap metal it's a piece of scrap metal i like i think it is some quite difficult to obtain silver hmm i mean still obtainable but um like it wasn't just a piece of iron it's that just, was like melted to a rock. It's just by me. a guy who owns the equipment that could melt shit to rocks. <laughs> who went out there with the express purpose of mining rocks, by the way. Of course, yeah. Uh, it's also a bit weird that he claimed that this cigar-shaped craft was completely smooth, completely featureless. Yet there's just scraps of metal just falling off this thing. Yeah, and this isn't a piece of, like, silky smooth, beautiful no. space metal. This looks like it was recovered from the Titanic. Like, it is... <laughs> Literally. It's dissolving. It looks rusty. It's black. It's disgusting. Yeah, it, it's not the most convincing uh, piece of evidence ever recovered from a crash site. And, of course... Very shortly after the incident, um, he released his book, When They oh. Appeared, oh, uh, which was a retelling of the Falcon Lake incident. It is the inside story of a close encounter. The artwork for the cover is very interesting. It tells you more about, I think, the man than the story, uh, but that's the cover of the book. <laughs>
Well, there's so many. There's a lot of mixed signals. Yeah, because the so we have the craft there in the middle of the woods. Everything kind of checks out so far, but then on the horizon <laughs> we have like the faded silhouettes of a bunch of men. About twelve men in in suit. They look like in men in suits. black, like C MIB officers. Okay, but some of them look like MIBs. This guy on the far left is just wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> That's not an MIB. That's just a stylish gentleman. And at no point were any of these men mentioned in the story at all. No, I don't know what. The, maybe these were like characters or people. He that is a turtleneck. <laughs> it's just a full on turtleneck. <laughs> You never asked me who was piloting the craft. <laughs> who? None other than legendary jazz musician Miles Davis. Okay, book his ass. So, I mean, this is the one thing that I've made it very clear before. I hate to see on the podcast, which is people having a motive uh, for why they would fake a story like <laughs> this. People making a job out of the paranormal. People making money out of the paranormal. Exactly. It's nothing we hate more. Exactly. Side note, obviously, patreon.com. Obviously. This Paranormal Life. Make sure uh, and go to www. Um, go to um, www.paranormalmembersclub uh, to, to get your way into the secret hotel. That'll cost you as well, obviously, all money. But people like this who have this agenda to monetize the paranormal, <sighs> I can't stand them. That's sick. Unbearable. <sighs> It's not what we like to see, and it does put a little bit of a dampener on a case that has so much fantastic evidence, like this case, the Falcon Lake incident. So with all this evidence in mind, all the pros, all the cons, what we need to do is take all of these ingredients and make a conclusion soup, which is either going to be sweet or sour, yes or no. Chef Kit, what, where, what's, what's going on in your kitchen today? Why is your soup s- s- sour? Why are you having a sour soup? Or indeed sour. a sweet soup? <laughs> I don't know how to cook. That's That should be evident by now. What is it supposed to be? Cold? <laughs> are we going to come down on a delicious, cold, sour, metze platter? <sighs> Stefan has painted quite the picture. Quite the picture indeed. A lot of uh, what he hit upon here were just textbook UFO close encounter tropes. It's fantastic. Yeah. And we got some first-hand evidence that that was brilliant. I did think whenever we first saw that craft, uh, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt, so I didn't really say much. But I think you would maybe agree. That's a pretty generic sketch of a UFO. Yeah. It's not reinventing the UFO. What I like to see in my crazy hillbilly... <laughs> paranormal encounter drawings uh is you know a flare you want to see a cigar (laughs) i want to see see, little wings i want to see a gray riding a cigar like a bull at a rodeo (laughs) honestly but the whole the whole thing is i mean these these like cliche ufos and Mm. these cliche aliens the grays with the big eyes i mean it's come from somewhere Mm. those those ideas They've been developed and obviously they've been kind of like hijacked by the mainstream media and Hollywood and the retellings of these stories. But I mean, these 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 ideas and these iconic UFOs have to come from somewhere. And maybe, Kit, maybe everyone's drawing the same ship because they all look the same and they're all real. You ever think of that? It is possible. If you ask me to draw a, a freaking hamburger... I'm not going to draw an apple because hamburgers are real, Kit. I don't need to reinvent them. I just draw the thing. Okay, dude, calm down. <laughs> I'm just calm getting down. fired up. I'm just getting Rory so standing up. up. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, if so, if an extraterrestrial came to Earth yeah. Yeah. and yeah. they saw... Yeah. What do you want me to do? Draw a cat. Draw a cat. <laughs> Stick with the it's hamburgers. A, it's a hamburger it's got two buns okay. and a patty i know hamburgers look a bit like a ufo but we gotta drop this metaphor if an alien came to earth and they saw one plane in the sky yeah and they might be like whoa that is crazy dog that is that is some human flying technology that's pretty interesting they sketched that down if any other alien came to earth for landed on any point on earth yeah and Basically, 99.99999% of time that they see something flying in the sky, it's going to look exactly the same as that first sketch. Exactly. Because there's 
millions and millions of planes in the world and they all look the goddamn same. Yeah. We nailed it first time. Nailed it was the book. perfect. Oh, by we, I mean me. I'm taking credit for it. The Wright brothers you knocked, deserve it, knocked it out of the park. How many flights have they taken? You've taken twice as many. <laughs> oh, the right, the, the Wright brothers. Wright brothers, oh, what, what do they fine. get? 50 meters? May I've gone, I've flown You've long done haul. You've done Heathrow to LA, baby. I've done long haul hours. economy. <laughs> they were in something below economy for sure. Uh, they didn't even get peanuts. It's possible that this is a real meme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all this aside, I guess what I'm pointing at is that that's suspicious to me that nothing about this was unique as an encounter, but rather it was a classic encounter. It kind of borrowed from all different stories we've heard before. It's true. And that leaves us with the possibility that this is just a textbook UFO encounter or that this is exists only in the mind of Stefan. A plagiarized UFO encounter. It's a, it's a dangerous line that we walk, that we tread every day. But unfortunately, we have to come down on a conclusion. So based on the evidence kit, where, where, where are you landing? I was pretty on board, like you, until you started sowing the seeds of doubt. And I'm, I'm glad you had the cajones to come on here and tell us the truth that Stefan's a bit of a booze hunt. And he wanted to keep that from us. And now I'm starting to think that my initial diagnosis of him falling asleep in a waffle iron could be closer to the truth than we first thought. Yeah, I, I mean, I was the same way. I, I was so ready to uh, give this case a yes until I investigated a little bit deeper and I found some of the uh, skepticism that followed him as the years went on. Granted, a lot of that skepticism has been dealt out by the force, by the police. Right. Um, you know, which obviously if they've been instructed by their higher ups, they're going to say, oh, he was drunk that night. Oh, you you, oh, you don't think they have empty bottles in the squad car and they just throw one down and they go, you look like you've been drinking, Stefan. 100% that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. To a to a guy like this walking around with, with welding gear. <laughs> It's, it's an easy sell. It's an, absolutely an easy sell. Um, so I was quite on the fence. I think what I would have liked is one more bit of convincing evidence. If Stefan had been able to go back to the site within a couple of days, that would have been great. If he'd been a little more forthcoming, for sh- it would have helped for sure. Yeah. I mean, he. I think he was measured for radioactivity and there might have been a tiny spike, but not enough. I mean, not the amount you would assume you'd be uh, after being blasted in the chest by an alien exhaust. Also, he's an industrial mechanic. He, he definitely gets a little bit more juice than everyone else in their day job. 100%. Mining like radioactive rocks in the forest yeah. is probably not going to help. So I think anything more that had come forward from his side, and I probably... I would have been close to giving this one a yes. I love a good uh, UFO encounter. They're one of my favorite ones to investigate. But unfortunately... I think for this week, it's going to have to be a no from me. I think that makes it a double no, folks. A big old bowl of ice cold sour soup, unfortunately. But wow, what a great case. And thank you so much to Emily for emailing that in to this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com. Make sure to email in your own submissions, guys. We've actually got a couple recently that we love and we're going to take a look at. Uh, so keep sending them in and hopefully we'll get to investigate your case. If you enjoyed the show, if you want more of the show, if you want to hear your name shouted out and probably made fun of right here at the end of the podcast, you can check out This Paranormal Life on Patreon, Patreon, where for small amounts, you can get big rewards, baby, and you can get bonus episodes and have a blast, and it's a really great time for just a few bucks, so definitely check that out, because it's the best place to go right after the This Paranormal Life Secret Society. Uh Uh-oh. This is a society where the elitist of the elite, the smartest (laughs) of the smart, the most dangerous of the danger, gather together to fight, drink, and investigate. Because you would think that all the people that you just described wouldn't have a lot of free time. Au contraire, mes amis. <laughs> These people have nothing to do but shite post. Exactly. And those are the kind of people I want to be around. Those are the kind of like my... It's like a hive of bees, but the bees don't give a shit about honey anymore. No. They give a shite about memes. Um, and they all meet in the fantastic This Paranormal Life 
uh, Facebook Secret Society. So check that out if you're on Facebook and uh, come hang out with everyone over there. And as we said, if you do support us on Patreon, you get your name shouted out right here on the podcast. So let's do this. Thank you to Steve Lones. Steve, you'll never be alone, S. Because you got two pals right here, me and Kit. And we need a place to stay, brother. Because we getting evicted. So hope that couch folds out. Because that's where you'll be sleeping, buddy. That's right, we're taking your bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we'll probably get you evicted. So let's start looking for the next person who's going to take the three of us. Yeah, but in the meantime, thanks so much for your support. Thanks also to Jose Acosta. This son of a bitch. I was walking on the street the other day, and out of nowhere, Jose accosted me. <laughs> he's, no way, he's, Jose. He straight up asked me for cash in the street. Well, he, he Mugging style. You, okay, so he didn't ask you for cash. He very much took well, it. Well, he asked, you. but he also had a, a dangerous glint in his eye, which I thought was pretty So he didn't have a actually. weapon either. Oh, well, he had a bat. So he did have a weapon, but he was wearing a baseball cap. So he did. So it was on the, the catcher's of mitt, of yeah. course. He was threatening me with the bat, however. Right. I think it's safe to say you were robbed. You, he stole your money. Yes, but Acosta sounds better with his name. It does. Acosta sounds a little bit better. But no, he robbed. Up, he robbed yeah. you. Yeah. It was like he actually bat one of your shins pretty badly. Is that the why you have the cast on this? I week? gave him the money and he hit me with the bat. Nice. Well, hey, now he's given us money, so it all works out. Thanks, buddy. Thanks also to Jessica Blunt. I'm pretty sure Jessica is in Distressica because uh, her Patreon message just came in like a, I just found it on the beach uh-huh. in a glass bottle. Wow. And it was like, help, I'm stranded. Uh, here's my here's my uh, debit card. Yep. Please use this to fund a rescue mission. I'm stuck on an island. Oh, wow. And I thought, Jessica, gotcha. I'm going to sign you up on our premium level. This is obviously what she would have wanted. Of course. Once she gets back to society, she'll have a host of bonus content waiting for her. Of course. So don't worry, Jessica. Um, you are on our top. I think it's like $100 a month, which we don't even have a tier for, which is crazy yeah, for your support. For you, yeah. So thank you. I, I hope someone's coming and uh, we'll keep the bonus episodes warm for you. Thanks also to Patrick Winshittle. Patrick actually has a hat trick up his sleeve. Oh, it's, like a magician. It's, it's like a fun little party trick. Okay. Uh, well, it's more that he, like odd job in James Bond, his hat is has a razor blade surrounding it. He throws that and it slices and dices people. Right, it's not really... Well, you said it was a trick. Well, it is a trick because What's you think trick? it's a hat, but it's a, a weapon? deadly weapon. That's not a trick. It is a trick. So if I own an umbrella that's also right. a sword... Yeah. Do you think that's a trick? Do you think that's... I mean, someone's been tricked, yeah. obviously, because... Yeah, it's a trick. It's a party trick. Woo, party trick. Fun little party trick. Cut the cake with the umbrella. Hey, oh, you stabbed the man. Oh, the umbrella's actually pretty freaking swordy. Hard to swing around. Oh, you made fun of my umbrella. Shit. No arms for you anymore. <laughs> you try and put on your blade hat, cut your own head. Ah! Patrick, we warned you not to buy the hat. Shut up! <laughs> also, if it's not raining, you don't get any weapons. No yeah. hat or It's so umbrella. hot today, you, you really should take the hat off. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Thanks also to Jamie Shaw. Caw, caw, caw. It's Jamie Shaw. <sighs> half guy, half magpie. With a glint in his eye. Whoa. For apple pie. I thought my guys take shiny things. Yeah, well, He's they got also a gotta, they gotta eat, don't they? Kit? You can't they eat can't, shiny things. They can't eat a man's watch. True. That would kill them. So I think that actually if you put a fresh apple pie, a magpie would actually, it's part of their freaking name for a start. So just don't come at me with birds and shit if you don't know, literally, if you don't know shit about birds. So. You do have a bunch How big is a crow egg? If you think you're so smart. How big is a crow's egg? I didn't say you didn't. Okay, fine. Uh, How big is a crow egg? uh, Like an inch across. That was a a lucky guess. Okay. How big is a pigeon's egg? Uh, Um, I mean, pigeon, crow, they're kind of similar. I I guess an inch across. (laughs) You seem like, oh, you thought I wouldn't get those, I guess. You have a lot of bird tattoos as well. And egg tattoos, all an inch across. Every bird lays a similar egg. You're like, well, not an ostrich. Oh, what? 
What the hell is that? Is that some type of crow, sir? <laughs> Listen, Jamie Shaw. You're obviously half man, half bird. I don't know what size your eggs are, but I'm glad that you're uh, laying enough to fund a subscription to the Paranormal Patreon. Thank you so much. Thanks also to Francisco Gomez. More like Francisco Romez. The first baby to ever be born at sea. And his, par <laughs> his parents took one look at him and said, No. Nah. <laughs> Threw him into the ocean. And this little baby rode his way back to shore. That's why they call really? him Romez. Um, he obviously became an Olympian after that. Fine age of two. At the <laughs> fine age of two and a half, actually, sir. Sorry. Um, and then, um, I mean, this was before the steroid scandal and everything at uh, two and a half. Because no one, no one questioned a why baby. he went from infant to Olympian rower. Yeah, no one wants to ask a baby if they're on steroids. A cute little baby. So he got away with it for quite a while. Um, but I'm glad to see that he's obviously pawned his Olympic golds to fund a very important subscription to the Paranormal Patreon. He was walking into the Rio games. They were like, uh, sir, can we get your sample? He's like, goo goo ga ga. <laughs> off. Like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Baby. Six foot nine, jacked, <laughs> but still in a diaper. <laughs> Thanks, lastly, but not leastly, to Brie Van de Geer. Brie is everyone's favorite type of cheese, and Brie is everyone's favorite type of person. Uh, Brie has about 1.2 million Facebook friends. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Zuckerberg tried to shut her down, but uh, she's they take down Brie, that takes on the whole platform. No one mm -hmm. has any friends left. Exactly. And of course, if he takes down Brie, you know he's got to take down Cheddar. You know he's got to take down Edam. Who <laughs> Cheddar is <laughs> arguably even more popular than Brie, yeah. let's be honest. And these aren't cheeses. These are just weirdly popular people with cheese-based names. But Brie is the queen, the queen Brie. Of course. Um, so I'm glad she's still up. I'm glad she's obviously making some money off those Facebook friends. And I'm so glad that she's supporting the This Paranormal Life Patreon. Guys, thank you so much for all your support. If you're waiting on your shout out, don't worry. I'm sure it's just around the corner. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Thank you for the email submission. And we will be back next week with a brand new paranormal tale. But until then, folks, remember to live fast, investigate, and die young, baby!